Why? Uh, it's incredibly powerful uh, for us to ask ourselves this question and take some introspective time to, to find the answer. I spent two months here, I went to the Olympics, and then I came back here. Um, as with many uh, uh, expatriates like myself, uh, I really fell in love with the country and I've been here ever since. Like hundreds of employees, um, depending on accurate payroll, and you have a payroll processor who's there literally 24 hours in the office to, to get through all, all the things they have to do. And so you, you, know, you really feel bad and you say, how can we fix this? Um, and of course, coming from Silicon Valley, we fix it with software. Um, so we developed software and we answered that, we, we, you know, we fixed that problem for ourselves. Uh, and, we, and we continued growing that business. Well, in, in 2014, I said, you know, there's, there's, uh, there's a real opportunity to, to share this solution with the market. Like, I, I think other businesses are having this problem. And so uh, I started walking around and trying to sell this thing that we had built for ourselves to other companies. Uh, and I, I walked the streets of Manila selling our, you know, pitching our software. I have, I have the holes in my shoes. And you know, at that time, I saw a need and uh, I saw that I could fix it, that I could solve it, and that's all I was doing. And, and you know, that's how it started just having a problem and knowing the solution and knowing that I could do, I could make that solution uh, real. So, and that was okay. Um, but what happened was I started walking around and talking to clients and hearing their stories and it's amazing, like I lived that pain and, and I felt that pain from our clients, that, from the people that we talked to. And that got me thinking about why I was why I was doing this? Um, why is this? Uh, why does this matter? And you know, when I got that clarity, um, it helped move things. It helped me in the business uh, just tremendously. I mean, you guys, as young people, as young leaders, um, you're going to go through incredible challenges. And if you don't have a good answer to that question, you're going to be crushed. In 2014, we had competitors that had 50 million pesos in funding and more. They were, they were miles ahead of us. Nobody knew who Sprout was. I was walking around Manila trying to sell this thing that we had built that I thought worked up against up against uh, companies that everybody in Manila knew the name of. Um, and there were times when I was like, what am I doing? You know, like, is this gonna work? Um, and if you don't have a good answer to that why, that question why, why am I doing this? You'll, you're gonna stumble in those times. You're gonna lose focus. You're gonna, you're gonna spend a few days just not feeling it. Um, and you'll lose that time that you desperately need to move your business or your agenda forward. This is famous Simon Sinek's talk on uh, Start With Why. Uh, probably a bunch of people here have seen it. Um, I watch it maybe once a quarter, once, once uh, a couple times a year. Um, it's a powerful talk. And one of the things he says, people don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. And that's what happened with us. That's what happened with Sprout. When I had clarity on that, 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 the answer to that question, um, people felt it. You know, our clients felt it. We started signing more clients. <laughs> I mean, and in those early days, our software was young, okay? Imagine there's 32 different types of overtime in this country. Automating timekeeping for that is incredibly complex. Uh, and our software was young and we were building out the features and our clients went through a lot with us, you know? And we were still asking them for money. <laughs> um, but they got that vision. I had people on my team that have had that vision of why we were doing this, what we were trying to accomplish. 
and our clients could feel it. And so we still have every single one of those clients today. We have not lost a single one of them, despite what they went through in the early days as we were building out the software. Our software is a thousand times better now. We, we cater to large companies. Um, and it's great, but in those early days of 2014, early 2015, it was not like that. And you need that vision. You need to have it. Your clients, your colleagues need to have it. Um, because with that, you can survive a lot. The beauty of this is that when you're doing business with people who believe what you believe, and you're hiring, more importantly, you're hiring people who believe what you believe, I am a millennial, hate that term. Um, I'm on the edge. Uh, and you know, for us, for our generation, it's more important than ever to have an answer to this question. Imagine in, in, the, in the US in the 1950s, um, people were just coming out of the depression and people were just struggling to, to survive. And so the only thing they cared about was a steady job, a steady paycheck. And that's what that generation um, grew up with. Their kids, who are our par parents, actually had some breathing room. They had money, because their parents worked so hard. Imagine my grand, I have one grandfather who was a chicken farmer and another who was a dairy farmer. Um, and the chicken farmer ended up becoming a CPA and the dairy farmer ended up starting his own business which became successful. They worked incredibly hard, and they gave our parents um, opportunities they didn't have. And, and then our parents rebelled and uh, said, there's more to life than working. You know, um, you should dream, you should have ambitions. And they taught us that. They taught the young people of today that you should have dreams, you should have goals, you should make, you should, you can do anything you want. You're special. And, and I grew up with that. A lot of us here did. It's so funny because I saw this post on, on Facebook. Somebody was talking, uh, this adult at the time had posted, yeah, these millennials, you know, um, they're all taught that they're special and that they're different and that they're going to do something great. And I was just reading it and I was like, yeah, it's so true, but, but I really am special. <laughs> I, I really am going to do something great. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, they all think that, but I'm different. The irony of that is, is incredible, you know? <laughs> um, and we really have that. We have that feeling. Millennials have that feeling. Um, but what's happened is that um, we also have technology. Now, technology makes things possible in an instant, okay? So um, if you want an update, if you want to learn something, you go on YouTube and you watch a video about it and you know how to do it, you know? Um, and that creates this instant gratification culture. So now you have two things combining for us, for young people, for young leaders, for young employees, for young, for young people in general. Um, the need to have purpose, to have... Um, uh, the need to have an impact, and at the same time, the need for instant gratification. So you have a 22-year-old who's saying, I want to make a big difference. Well, you're 22 years old, you know. I mean, you have a lot of work ahead of you before you'll make a really big difference. Um, so what happens is, you have these um, things that the older generation thinks about us. Uh, oh, millennials, they want instant gratification. They, they have to have an impact. Um, they need flexibility. They need recognition, you know? Well, what we really strive for, what we're, what we, more than any other generation, what we're looking for is purpose. And so, this is really, really powerful. If you can instill that feeling of purpose, uh, it's more important than ever to, to focus on that in your work, it, with your colleagues, with your uh, boss, 
with the people who work for you, um, you know, creating that preaching purpose uh, is incredibly uh, vital now in our, in our group. And so really what happens is millennials aren't difficult, They're just, they just need to be understood. We're looking for purpose, we want to have this big impact. Well, we can, you know, you can show that to people. Imagine we have payroll and HR software. It's not sexy. Payroll and HR is not like the sexiest thing to, to solve. Um, but you know what? We're making an impact. Sprout is making an impact in the world. We're affecting an entire country. And every single person working at Sprout knows that. I talk about it all the time. <laughs> Um, and, it, and that's important. We're, we're able, knowing that allows us to do incredible things. We started out 2016 with 12 employees. We ended the year with 60. We grew faster than any one of our competitors without any funding, where they had tons of funding and started earlier. Imagine. It's because we know, what we're, we know the mission we're on, and our clients and the, our business partners and the people working with us know our mission. They know why. And that's powerful. So, um, I do like talking about like, the big picture and the vision and the mission and stuff, but I also want to share some things that, that we've developed um, in recognition of today's world. So, um, the first, no phone laptop policy during meetings. So in these days, you get into a meeting and everybody's on their phone or their laptop. Nobody's listening to anybody else. And they're like, yeah, but there's, you know, this meeting is so long, I'm gonna be behind. No, you know, we put frameworks in place to make the meetings efficient. We give every, each person a lot of time to speak if, it's a, if, if we're doing a status update meeting, things like that. Um, and, then, and then, you know, that policy, everybody pays attention to each other. Next, encourage physical interaction. You know what, what happens these days is that we're on our phones and our laptops and our tablets so much, people forget to talk to each other. So something we talk about at Sprout is is talking. If you're waiting for a meeting, you'll see two people, they're waiting for a meeting to start, they'll both be on their phone. Right? We tell them, no. You know, ask, ask a question. Hey, how's your sister? I heard she graduated from university. Congrats. That's awesome. You know? Oh, what do, what's your next vacation? Where, where are you guys going? Um, we, really, we really encourage that because at the end of the day, like I tell everybody at Sprout, you're spending so much of your life here, you should enjoy it. You should feel um, rewarded. You should have friends here. You should ha have a sense of belonging. And that comes from that physical interaction. That comes from talking to each other. So, next one, big for productivity, experiments. Experiments partner with KPI, so I'll talk about both. So in terms of experiments, uh, we're constantly doing experiments at Sprout. Um, just testing things. Hey, let's put up this kind of Facebook ad and let's see what traffic we get in the next week. Micro experiments. You set up the boundaries. How long is it gonna be? What are we gonna measure? so that you have measurable results and you're constantly experimenting. And millennials love it. I love it. My employees love it. Because we always get new things, you know? A lot of times it's like something that they don't know and so they'll go on YouTube and, and Google it or research it, you know? They'll watch a video on it, they'll come back, they'll put it together, we'll test it. If it works, awesome. We'll double down on it. Um, and it's not just like Facebook ads or something on the website. It could, be, uh, it could be running a sales meeting differently. Like, ah, you know what, instead of doing the proposal in the second meeting, why don't you um, 
try and discover more about what their issue is or you know, try something else and then hold off on the proposal just, just yet and then see how that works over the next month, see how that impacts your, um, your meetings. Could be in engineering, um, trying a new code framework for something. It, it could be anything. But the point is, they're short term, they're measurable, and they're balanced by KPIs. So you have long term KPIs. In the first quarter, you need X sales. In the, in the first quarter, we need X traffic to our website. Uh, things like that. So that, because us, us young people, we'll just start doing crazy stuff, right? We still have to have a direction, have to have a rudder, have to have a, a, a goal that's discrete. Uh, but once you have that, it's, it's very powerful to run these little experiments and keep people engaged with what they're doing. Finally, uh, or next is regular team building activities to help, to help us disconnect from the digital world. So um, in Sprout, we do uh, a bunch of little things. We do Muay Thai twice a week, uh, which is like uh, physical you know, training. The trainer comes to our office, brings pads, whoever wants to. Um, punches it out for a while, you know? Um, we do massage a few times a week. We have masseuses come in. Um, we do yoga. We have a yoga activity. A lot of stuff to get people up, out of the, off, out of the chairs, doing stuff. It's incredible for morale. It's incredible for fitness, which is a big thing with Sprout. Um, and it's incredible just... Uh, Oh, I'm freaking out. Uh, <laughs> and it's incredible just um, as a break from technology. We're attached to our stuff 24-7. My phone is next to my bed. When I wake up in the morning, I check what's come in during the night. Um, so it, it's important to work breaks, um, structure breaks into the work day. And it's awesome for morale. And team building. Um, Another thing, tools. So recognizing the role of technology and leveraging it. Uh, it it's incredibly powerful. Imagine uh, I locked my keys in the car in San Francisco right before getting on a flight to Manila. So my car is there parked in the driveway of my grandma, totally dead. And we don't have any spare key. That We had one set of keys. So I was like, OK, so I'm in Manila. My car is in San Fran. Nobody can get into it. My parents are like, you fix it. OK, we're not fixing it. OK, so I go on Yelp. Uh, Yelp has this awesome feature where you can request quotes from in bulk. So I just said, locksmith, this is the area code. Give me quotes. I got 11 quotes in like three hours for the, for the locksmith. Called up one of them, said, how much is it? 400 bucks? No, sorry. It's a little spendy. Called up another one, how much is it? 250. OK, done. How can I pay you? Oh, PayPal? Great. And it was fixed literally the next day from halfway around the world. Same thing applies in the workplace. You need productivity? Use Trello. You need um, communication? Use Slack. You need HR and payroll, you sprout. You know, these little tips and tricks can really help drive business, help drive your business forward. Um, so those are um, pretty much what I want to share today. Thanks. Yeah.